I'm your host, Stephanie Sutton, and you're watching The View from Hampton U. There's a growing need for healthcare plans and healthcare professionals in America. Hampton University has heeded the call to help build this need in one primary area, pharmaceutical sciences. Hi, I'm Dr. Wayne Harris, and I have the privilege of serving as Dean of the School of Pharmacy at Hampton University. The School of Pharmacy at Hampton is important for several reasons. First of all, nationally there is a significant underrepresentation of minority citizens in the profession of pharmacy. Secondly, there is growing need for health care reform. The Affordable Care Act of 2010 calls for increased involvement of pharmacists as members of the health care team. The grants that we've received from the National Institutes of Health help us to build a research portfolio within the school, first of all. They are involved in two primary areas of research at the moment, both of which ultimately focus on drug discovery, providing new treatment options for common diseases. One of the drugs focuses its attention on pulmonary fibrosis. The other grant focuses on development of potential new drugs for the treatment of cancer. The important feature of the grants that we receive from the National Institutes of Health is that they are both investigator-initiated grant awards. The faculty members pursue research in their areas of expertise. As a result of their interest, they develop ongoing projects of research. Those projects require extramural support, grant funding. Those individuals and all of our faculty members are seeking ways to fund these ongoing research projects. It is their interest, their passion in research, the diseased entities that they're studying that led to submission of the proposals and they are designated as principal investigators because it is their project, their idea that will lead to an ongoing program of research. Dr. Neela Mazad, basic research focuses on pulmonary fibrosis. She was selected as the principal investigator for that project based on the fact that she desires to study the causes for pulmonary fibrosis and approaches that might be used for treatment in the future. Her selection as a principal investigator is based on the fact that she initiated the project and it is her desire to fund it on an ongoing basis. The second research project has Dr. Anand Iyer as the principal investigator. His research focuses on the development of potential new drugs for the treatment of cancer. And similarly, he developed the research project, he submitted the proposal, and the funding is, is provided to continue that research for a long, over an extended period of time, hoping to develop new approaches to the treatment of various cancers. Hi, I'm Dr. Neela Mazad, Assistant Professor in the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences at Hampton University School of Pharmacy. I joined Hampton University in August of 2008. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Dr. Anand Ayer. I am an Assistant Professor in the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences in the School of Pharmacy as well, and I have been a part of the faculty since 2009. We received two grants in the uh, last two years actually. The first one we received in 2011 from the National Institutes of Health for Pulmonary Fibrosis. And I am the principal investigator or you can say the project leader on the grant. The second grant we received last year, 2012, and it is on lung cancer. And Dr. Ayer will talk about that grant. Yeah, so we received this grant last September uh, from the National Cancer Institute which is the cancer wing of National Institutes of Health. This research is to essentially identify biomarkers that drive cancer progression, particularly in lung cancer, and to characterize and develop novel drug therapies that may be able to combat the disease. So this grant is a five-year, $1.3 million grant. Uh, Dr. Azad is a co-investigator on the cancer grant as well. Basically, lung cancer is a very debilitating disease. Uh, eight out of every ten people who get diagnosed with the disease eventually end up dying of it. So cancer is the second leading cause of death in the United States. Uh, the most common forms of cancer are breast cancer, prostate cancer, colon cancer, and lung cancer. Of these, the one that can be prevented the most is lung cancer. The main cause of lung cancer is smoking. 
and we have about 45 million smokers in the United States. It's a completely preventable disease and the prognosis is very, very bad if you have lung cancer. It kills more people than breast, prostate and colon cancer combined, which are the three other most common forms of cancer. Therefore, it is highly important for us to develop therapies that can target this disease and extend the lifespan of people who have been diagnosed. However, the best way to prevent it is to stop smoking. The other grant that we received is on pulmonary fibrosis. There is no cure for pulmonary fibrosis. People who are diagnosed with pulmonary fibrosis die within five years of diagnosis. It is a very debilitating disease and through our grant we are trying to identify key biomarkers that can cause progression of fibrosis and we hope to target these biomarkers so that we can come up with a preventive strategy or a therapeutic strategy against the disease. As Dr. Azad mentioned, uh, we received two grants. The second grant we received was in September 2012. This is from the National Cancer Institute and I am the project leader on that grant. Dr. Azad serves as a co-investigator or a co-project leader. Both grants are actually million dollar grants and it is very rare to get uh, such grants. Uh, we worked very hard towards it, uh, worked in the lab, got preliminary data for the grant and put the grant proposal together and we were fortunate enough to get it so early in our careers. Yeah, we did uh, get a lot of support from the university. We were actually recipients of a few Hampton University research grants which actually helped jumpstart our research here and we were able to build upon it and apply for these uh, grant offerings through the National Institutes of Health. One of the primary initiatives that we have, we are involved in is the Governor's School of Hampton. We actually get applications from really high achieving students who are really interested in doing basic research. Apply to us through the program, we are able to select our candidates and they are able to do a year-long research rotation with us. Basically entails about 35 hours of research mentorship every month but they have to come into the lab, do a lot of research activities, and then at the end of the year, which is two semesters, they have to present their work in terms of a poster, and they will be evaluated by the judges, and then they will be given awards if they, are, if they have done good work. And these high school students are really doing very well in our labs. We had a couple of students last year, and uh, we have a couple of students working right now, and they have progressed so well through the year and they are almost done with a small research project that we give to students every time they come. Our postdoctoral fellows in the lab help the students initially, but then they just do the work themselves. So it has been great so far. And they, I wanted to add that they are fairly independent now and uh, they are extremely bright, extremely driven and we are very, very happy to have them. They have really made a difference to our, our work here. These two grants have been very beneficial for the School of Pharmacy and for us. It definitely enhances the research capabilities of the School of Pharmacy. We are able to buy a lot of new instrumentation that we, as well as the people who are working here and students, will be able to access. It puts the School of Pharmacy in a strong position to recruit more faculty, more researchers who are interested in the kinds of work we are doing. For example, we have four postdoctoral fellows who we have been able to bring on board just for doing the project. It also helps us build upon the reputation of Hampton University School of Pharmacy in the community. We thank the School of Pharmacy and Hampton University for supporting us with the grant proposal. More from the School of Pharmacy in just a few. The View from Hampton U, bringing you in-depth interviews, cutting-edge research, amazing sports highlights, faculty and student profiles, and much more. I'm Stephanie Sutton. And I'm Joseph Walters. And, and you're, you're watching, watching The View from Hampton, Hampton U. U. And now, more from The View from Hampton U. The School of Pharmacy, when it was created, 
and many schools of pharmacy choose to serve the community by providing drug information services. Almost from its uh, inception, the school established a drug information center, which is supervised by a faculty member with expertise in the area of providing drug information to the community, which we serve. The purpose of the Drug Information Center is to serve as a resource for health professionals in the Hampton Roads area of Virginia and beyond, as well as to provide a source for individual patients, travelers, to receive information about drugs which they are using. If individuals were traveling out of country, for example, they might have need to identify a suitable drug to, as a substitute for the one in which they're using. The Drug Information Center is available as a resource that individuals from outside the campus can call and ask for information regarding their particular drug therapy. Hello, my name is Carl Tulio and I'm the Director of Drug Information here at Hampton University School of Pharmacy. One of my main responsibilities here is running the Drug Information Center and training students. The students are in their final year of of a pharmacy school and they do a five-week rotation through drug information here. We use this facility as a training site for them in answering questions that, that may come into our center. We have them doing different things besides drug information. We teach them about writing, how to write properly as far as uh, medical wise, do research as far as literature researches for different problems. We try and expose them to much of, as much of the different resources that we have available here so that if they have a specific question, they know which resource to go to in order to answer that question. Another one of my jobs here is running the IPPE program, which stands for Introductory Pharmacy Practice Experience. And this is a program that the students between their second and third years do for a three-week rotation during the summer. It exposes them to a situation where they, they will go into a hospital, spend three weeks there. It allows the student to kind of see what the pharmacists do and gives them practical experience. And it sort of hopefully reinforces their decision to be pharmacists. We, we want them to make sure that pharmacy is a good vocation for them before they spend, you know, six, eight years trying to get their degree. So we want to make sure that they actually like the practice of pharmacy and want to be pharmacists. So this kind of this introductory pharmacy experience gives them some experience in working in a pharmacy. I have one particular student in mind has a child, a five-year-old daughter. You know, she does a tremendous job. She was a really good student for me. And I think those are the types of students that make the best pharmacists and those are the types of students that we're training here to be empathetic with the patient, to take time with the patient, to make sure that the patient's questions are all answered. I just want to let you know that we do take questions from all prof uh, medical professionals, doctors, dentists, pharmacists, but we also take questions here from other people. We, we have some questions from uh, the police sometimes or fire departments. They will find you know, drugs or medications and, and give us a call to help us identify it. But we also take calls from you know, Hampton students, but also the general public. Anybody out there that has a question, we're, we're glad to answer any medically related question that you have. Uh, our number here is area code 757-728-6693. And again, we are very excited about the opportunities to contribute to the needs of the community, to help healthcare professionals to have access to the latest information on effective drug therapy, and to have patients, citizens, be able to call to get information to help in cases of emergency or in cases where there is a need beyond what they're, what they're able to provide. We have a total of approximately 260 professional students. The curriculum requires four years of study in our professional curriculum. The students that we select are from the state of Virginia. They are also uh, derived from states across the country. We have a very diverse student body. Approximately 80% of the professional uh, enrollment is composed of African Americans. And then we have students from all racial, ethnic, backgrounds in addition to that. This diversity 
allows us to focus on providing care to patients across the country, regardless of their background. Many individuals in our country are medically underserved. One of the national priorities for addressing medically underserved communities is to produce a diversity of health professionals uh, from all racial and ethnic backgrounds. That diversity is important to the, our School of Pharmacy, it's important to the university, and it's priority as we grow and develop. We have significant health disparities in which individuals from various groups have poor health outcomes compared to, to the national average. That's a priority that needs to be addressed. It needs to be addressed by research. It needs to be addressed by education of a large and diverse health professions population. We have problems with substance abuse, which require that we bring national attention to the needs of our society in addressing substance abuse. We have problems with underrepresentation, and I want to end my, my conversation about the school by emphasizing the importance of, of addressing underrepresentation in the various health professions. The View from Hampton U will return in a moment. Proton therapy was much easier than what I was expecting. I thought surely I would have some side effects. The Hampton University Proton Therapy Institute is treating prostate, breast, lung, pediatric, brain, and other cancers with the most precise form of radiation treatment available. And I had no side effects whatsoever. So it was the best decision I ever made. <laughs> if you or a loved one has been diagnosed with cancer, call the Hampton University Proton Therapy Institute today. This is the point in our show where we have a chance to highlight one extraordinary faculty member and one extraordinary student. Enjoy! My name is Halima Ali, a professor in the math department at Hampton University. I'm originally from Somalia. I was born and raised in Mogadishu. I've got my B.S. in Mathematics with minor Physics. After receiving the B.S., I've taught high school students for a couple of years before coming to U.S. I received my M.S. and Ph.D. at Howard University, Washington, D.C. After I got my master's degree, actually, at Howard, I became a full-time instructor while I was also a full-time student in the BHD program. I have been with Hampton since fall 1983. I teach undergraduate classes as well as graduate classes. I'm also involved in outreach program, which is bringing high school students to the campus of Hampton University to train them in the area of nonlinear dynamics and application to nuclear fusion. It's the only center in, the, in HBCU and only center in Virginia of its kind. I was the coordinator of the program and also a faculty mentor. During the fall, we take them to American Physical Society Division of Plasma Physics conferences, and that's where they present their summer research. And it has been very successful. It's unique in its kind. After that, when they go to their respective high school, we encourage them through emails, and we encourage them also to enter their projects in science first, national competitions. And some of our students, they went on and competed for the Siemens Western House uh, competition, which is a very highly competitive competition where students from all the states compete actually. Two times they have become semi-finals. My interest in research is application of nonlinear dynamics into the problems in nuclear fusion. Scientists are trying to bring what goes on in the stars on Earth in a controlled manner. Every summer we go to present our research findings in uh, international conferences 
we have went so far in Italy, in uh, UK, Australia, India, Bulgaria. Winning Hampton, uh, the Ham Award was a very humbling experience, you know. For me, uh, a big part of what I get my pleasure is to engage students in research because I was born and raised in Mogadishu, Somalia, and from my journey from there to where I am today, I've had the fortune to meet a lot of people. I stand on their shoulder today and give me hand to be where I am. And now, more from The View from Hampton U. Hello, my name is Tabitha Dawalio. I'm an architecture student at Hampton University. I also play tennis for Hampton. And I'm an international student from Brazil, um, from a city called Campinas. I have been playing tennis for 10 years now, since I was 12 years old. I am just turned 22. And it's such a unique experience. I mean, tennis is a sport like volleyball. I think it's one of the only sports that you don't have physical contact with the opponent. And I think it's a, it's a pretty amazing sport because you, you need to be independent. I got offered a scholarship four years ago from Dr. Scream, the coach at the time. It was my first time in a foreign country at all or getting on a plane. It was pretty amazing, unique experience. I got here, I didn't know any English, so that was a little tricky. But the tennis team was very, and, and the school in general, they're very understanding and helpful. When I was a kid, I always liked to make little models, and I really liked math. So I, I was considered either engineering or architecture, but I'm an artist, so I draw, I like to paint. So that, made, that, that drew me to architecture. I had no idea it was like if, if I liked the program, if it was good. But the reason why I chose it as well is because we have a situation in Brazil where I have a lot of slums, and the government, they do have ways to help those people, but architects that work with building houses for people who need it and free houses are not very good in building houses for people. They just build pretty much boxes where nobody can live in. So I thought it would be pretty cool if someone had a mission. I want to have my communities back home, but after a, a couple years of experience here and learning more how to be helpful in communities, if, you, if people can just start trying to solve the problems that they have very close to them, they'll find problems and they'll see that they can be helpful. So just try to bring that back to Brazil. And now I think I learned that one of my main focus would be the educational buildings and schools, high schools, middle schools, building socially disadvantaged communities and how can we build affordable and at the same time provide them everything that any other school has as far as experience and building and laboratories and all that. Oi Brasil! É, eu tenho ficado aqui em Hampton University durante quatro anos. Foi uma ótima experiência. Definitivamente, eu acho que a gente precisa de mais representantes. Então, se vocês tiverem uma oportunidade de vir para cá, para Virginia, para Hampton, pode vir. It's always great to have you join us. Stop by next week for a very special episode that will feature HU alumni Jeremiah Jones and his father Jerome Jones Jr. and their all inspiring artistry. You don't want to miss it. When I found out that I had prostate cancer, I thought it was the end of the world. My wife broke down and cried. The Hampton University Proton Therapy Institute is treating prostate, breast, lung, pediatric, brain, and other cancers with the most precise form of radiation treatment available. Proton therapy made it a wonderful life. It really did. If you or a loved one has been diagnosed with cancer, call the Proton Therapy Institute at 877-251-6838. Great day to be alive. Join us next week for another exciting episode of The View from Hampton U.